Hi guys, uh, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeat.com. Hey, I just wanted to give you an update and um, uh, give some thank yous and stuff about uh, where I'm at with the lathe. So uh, when I last left off, uh, you know, I had taken off the uh, uh, direction uh, change gearbox for the lead screw, and um, it had uh, quite a bit of wear in uh, the bushing. And a friend of mine. Um, Gary Johnson was uh, kind enough to uh, take the gearbox housing um, with him and the shaft that goes through it that goes out to where the lead screw gear attaches um, uh, to put it on a milling machine to bore out the old bushing and make a new bushing for me. And uh, so I'm, I'm waiting on that. But anyway, Gary, if you're watching, hey, thanks so much uh, for doing that, man. You are you are truly a, a, a great friend. Also, want to um, thank uh, Richard for making something for nothing. You know, Richard uh, uh, was kind enough to make uh, uh, the bolt and the washer for my quill lock, and I will show that here in just a little bit. And um, Richard, hey, I appreciate it, man, and I appreciate the people that you sent to me. Um, uh, Chris Anderson, uh, you know, has, I've, I've been having a, a ball watching his uh, pattern making stuff and and the stuff that he's doing. It's been great. So Chris. Uh, keep the videos coming, man. They're 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 really quite enjoyable. I uh, also want to thank uh, Jeremy Gagnon. And uh, Jeremy, if I messed up your name, man, I'm sorry. Just send me an email and tell me how to pronounce it. I'm assuming that it's French. Uh, but anyway, Jeremy uh, sent uh, two gears to me, a, a 20 tooth and a 56 tooth, and another uh, gear bushing, so that at least I can get a three and a half thousand speed on the lathe. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much, man. You you guys. You guys are just uh, amazing to me. The uh, kindness that you've shown and the help that you've offered and the advice. I really appreciate it. And when I get the gear train up and running again, uh, Jeremy, I'll, I'll give you another shout out, man. Thank you, sir. Um, also, want to thank uh, a man by the name of Bill who sent me a, a lot of uh, Atlas 10F documents, a bunch of them that I didn't have. Bill, thank you. Um, those are appreciated and, and uh, uh, will come in very handy. I want to thank uh, Art Eckstein again. Uh, Art uh, sent me a, um, a technical book and uh, I appreciate having that. Uh, I've been needing, needing that kind of information. Art, um, thanks so much for all your support and, and the things that uh, uh, you've, you've suggested and, and the advice that you've given. It's, it's, it's proven very helpful. Um, so uh, I'm gonna before I get to the tailstock, I do want to talk about um, Halligan 142. I don't know if you guys have seen um, any of his uh, videos, but you know he's done a couple lathe restores, uh, South Bend lathes, and he has this little trick um, or technique or tip for cleaning the bedways um, using uh, Barkeeper's Friend and uh, and a green uh, Scotch Brite pad, and uh, the the difference is is quite astounding so I've cleaned the front ways on uh, on uh, old Bertha here I thought I'd show you that I let you see the difference between that uh, the front ways and the back ways that haven't been cleaned yet because it's uh, uh, very effective it's uh, um, they look almost new to me I mean other than apart from the dings now if somebody's got some magic treatment you know that will remove the dings too hey and the uh, wear just send that one my way will you um, so anyway, uh, let me uh, reposition the camera and um, let me show you these these ways and, and uh, Halligan's uh, little tip here, and and then uh, I'm going to go and, and show you the tailstock uh, parts that uh, that Rich was kind enough to make for me. So I'll catch you here in just a second. Oh, almost forgot. Hey, you know I'm burnt. You see that? Uh, I, I went out today and, and visited my uh, son who uh, happens to live in an area of, of uh, that the uh, eclipse was in totality you know it was a full eclipse I took some video of that and I'm gonna tack it on the end so if you guys are patient enough to watch the rest of this you guys get to see uh, a pretty cool uh, video of, of the full eclipse so uh, probably not the best video out there but hey it's brought from me to you guys so I hope you enjoy that too so anyway let's get back to the lathe Okay, so we're here back at the uh, lathe bed here, and what I want to point out is uh, notice how clean uh, these ways are, and then you know compared to the back ways. Now the um, uh, the technique that uh, or the trick or tip or whatever you want to call it that Halligan says uh, suggested is to use Barkeeper's Friend. Now they sell this in two types. Now this is this is the liquid kind, okay. 
and they also sell it in a, in a powder form. Um, now the active ingredient I think in both of these is the same. It's oxalic acid. So, but they, I use the uh, liquid stuff because I thought it was easy, uh, would be a little easier to use. So first I degrease the um, rails using some brake cleaner. Uh, got all the grease off of it and then uh, put some Barkeeper's Friend on there and then used a green Scotch-Brite pad and just scrubbed it. Just scrubbed it real good and uh, uh, took the stains out and it took uh, uh, all the dark gunk off of it and uh, as a classic uh, or as maybe as a example here you see back here there's a real dark stain so uh, when I do uh, the next video where I've got that one cleaned up we'll see you know how big the difference but I wanted you guys to see the difference between um, you know the front and back now that you know once it's um, all cleaned up the uh, you know you got to worry about flash rust so uh, what Halligan recommended uh, was using some Brasso just uh, give it a, a coat of uh, you know it's metal polish Brasso metal polish give it a light coat buff it in and then you know that will keep uh, the rust off of it until we're ready to put it back together and lube it up and everything so anyway um, best I can tell it's a, that was a great tip and Halligan uh, I don't know if you ever see this video but man if you do uh, thanks a bunch man I appreciate it so uh, let's uh, let's get to the uh, tail stock. So I'll bring you in on that here in just a second. Okay, so here's the uh, tail stock of my lathe, and uh, I'd mentioned that uh, I was missing the bolt for the quill lock, but I had the clamps. They're actually in the bore right now, and I had the handle, and that was it. And that I was needing a bolt and uh, a washer for it. And uh, Richard, for making something for nothing, uh, was very kind uh, to me and and says, hey. You give me a, uh, uh, a drawing and, and I'll make these for you. And sure enough, he did. He put a video out on it. If you're interested, I encourage you to go see uh, Richard's channel and, and watch him make these and make some of the other uh, some of the other really interesting stuff he's got on there. So if, if you've not been to Richard's channel, making something for nothing, um, I'll put a link down in the bottom. I, I really encourage you to go see. Um, so anyway, these simply go up here in the quill lock and I don't know if I can get my yeah got that up in there and then the washer bevel washer goes on there and then of course the stop or the handle but now the uh, nice and locked up it's it's not going anywhere so uh, Richard thanks again that gets me that much closer I gotta I gotta do a little uh, um, set screw here for the quill um, so you know it won't rotate that's something that I want to do and I haven't decided if I'm just going to grind it on uh, uh, you know a set screw on a grinder uh, or if I want to maybe try making making one on my uh, little Dunlop lathe that, that might be um, something kind of interesting I have a I have an old uh, I think it's a 46 model uh, Craftsman uh, Dunlap lathe. Uh, it's a model maker's lathe, but it lacks in a lot of ways. But uh, I think maybe I should do a video and maybe at least explain to some folks maybe why, as a beginner, you wouldn't want that lathe. So I'll come back here in just a second with the next thing. Again, I wanted to thank uh, Jeremy Gagnon for uh, the gears that he sent for the gear train um, and the bushing because uh, I was missing one. Uh, Jeremy, uh, thanks again. And again, if I if I butchered your name, I'm really sorry. Uh, just send me an email or, or something and I'll try to get it right next time. But when I get the gear, tri uh, gear train put back together on the other end, I'll definitely give you another shout out. So where to from here? Well, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the tail stock, uh, make the set screw for that. I don't know if I'll show that. I might just... Um, uh, just show that when it's done and then um, I don't know how long it'll be before Gary be done with my lead screw reverse gear box and its new bushing um, but I told him that uh, you know uh, work around his schedule if he was kind enough to do it for me then you know I'm, I can definitely uh, you know wait on his schedule um, but I think uh, coming up here real soon I want to uh, show you guys the uh, apron uh, well, I'll tell you what, matter of fact, let me just pop it up here and I'm going to point something out. Maybe you guys can help me out. So I'll be right back. As a cursory glance uh, at my apron, most parts of it look pretty good, except the gear here 
that's driven by this bevel from the lead screw for the crossfeed is as sharp as sharp can be, right? So it's 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 pretty worn. I could probably get by with it for a while uh, if I can't find another one. Uh, but more importantly, the bevel gear here that sits on a, a shaft right here that the lead screw runs through, there's a key here that's molded inside and can't really see it. But uh, it is, it's worn down to a razor. It's just a little nub. So I think um, from the f feel of it, you know, maybe I can, when I do the apron, I'll uh, pull that apart so I can get a good shot of these two pieces here and get the stuff cleaned up. But um, if any of you guys know a good source for those two gears, uh, uh, I'd appreciate it. I guess maybe eBay. Uh, look around. You know, I've bought some stuff on Clousing. Um, Clousing likes some of their stuff. I did get the uh, fiber washers for the gearbox. Those are those were pretty affordable. Uh, you can't buy um, the bushing for the gearbox. You have to buy the whole gearbox, and it's like 150 bucks. So, um, uh, so you know, I'm 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 not going to do that. And, and sides, Gary was kind enough said that he'd just bore the old bushing out and make a new bushing for me. So anyway, I think that's where I'm at. I really need to pull this apart and take a good look at it. And that's going to be the subject of uh, a very near um, video. Um, but anyway, for now, if any guys know where um, uh, a good place to get these these bushings, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not bushing, but this bevel gear. And this piece here that drives the lead screw, um, uh, will you shoot me an email or comment down below or something? Let me know. So anyway, that's uh, it for this video. I know it's short. Um, I've been really backed up at work uh, with a bunch of stuff going on there. And um, but anyway, uh, I just haven't forgot you guys. Thanks so much for your support and your help. Uh, I got more videos uh, coming down the pipe. I just I just got to find some time, you know. And uh, when I get the time, I'd be happy to put them out and share. So uh, with that, I'm going to leave you with uh, a video of uh, today's eclipse. And I hope you enjoy it. Other than that, have a blessed day.